Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a review of a brand new microphone slash software mixer from Elgato. Meow. That microphone is the Elgato Wave 3, and if you are interested in this USB microphone, it will cost you around $160. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And in the sake of full disclosure, I do need to let you know that Elgato sent me this microphone free of charge for the sake of doing this review. For this review, I have the microphone connected directly to my Mac with the gain set at 40% or three dots on the microphone, and this is compatible with both Windows and Mac. I will not do any kind of post-processing to the audio, but I may have to boost it in post, so check the lower third, or the doobly-doo rather, to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. Yeah, that was a good one. You will of course get the microphone, a desktop stand, a USB-C cable, an adapter which converts from quarter inch to 3 8 and 5 8 inch, and a couple pieces of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I am not terribly impressed with it. It is a little bit cheap feeling and a little bit too plasticky for my liking. The body is made out of plastic and there is a metal mesh grill with a tiny bit of give to it. The U-bracket mounting system is also made out of plastic, but it does have some metal screws there. The base microphone stand that is provided is nice and heavy and made out of metal and feels very sturdy. The adapter, as I mentioned, has both a 3 8 inch and 5 8 inch microphone threading for boom arm or standard microphone stands. Amazing! Then on the front of the microphone, you have three lights to indicate what setting you are adjusting, whether it be the microphone's gain, the headphone volume, or the mix level between computer playback and zero latency monitoring. Then you have a series of lights to indicate what level each of your settings are set at, and a dial slash button which you will press to switch between the settings you're adjusting, and you'll turn the dial to adjust the level for whatever setting you are currently on. On the back of the microphone, you will find a USB-C port to connect it to your computer. You will also find a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which as I've mentioned, does allow for computer playback and zero latency monitoring. And then on the top of the microphone, you will find a capacitive mute button. But as far as the specs, this microphone does have a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 70 Hz to 20 kHz, a sensitivity of around negative 25 dB, a max SPL of 120 dB, a dynamic range of 115 dB, a bit depth of 24 bit, and a sample rate of 96 kHz. And as far as the headphone amp on this thing, I was perfectly able to drive the Sennheiser HD 650s, which are very difficult to drive headphones. Now I am speaking into the Wave 3, spinning around to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. We will continue around the microphone to 180 degrees. Here's what it sounds like from the rear. Continuing around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle and then we will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Now I have decreased my gain to 20% and I am right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect. About three inches away from the microphone and here is how the audio sounds. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Next, let's go ahead and test the plosive rejection of this thing. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you leet gamers, now I am typing on the sad W keys. Oh, I'm so sad. Here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Now, although a provided desktop stand is very convenient, I want to demonstrate why using a desktop stand isn't necessarily the best. Right now, I have the Wave 3 on a boom arm, which allows me to get the microphone much closer to my mouth and just listen to the tone of my voice as well as how much background and room noise there is. And then I will type on my keyboard so you can hear how much of that is picked up with the microphone on a boom arm. 
Now I have the Wave 3 on the provided desktop stand. I will place it directly down in front of me, pointed up at my mouth, pay attention to how much room noise there is and how much ambience there is and the quality of my voice. And then God forbid I had to type on the keyboard, listen to how loud the keyboard is compared to my voice. It was much different and much better when the microphone was on the boom arm and the keyboard was much farther away. Now I am tapping on the desk to see how well the microphone does at rejecting that kind of noise. And then I will go ahead and tap the boom arm to see how much of that the microphone can reject. And if I am somebody who has this on the desktop stand and I just want to bump the desk for whatever reason, Here's how much of that it would pick up. Now let's see if the capacitive mute button causes any kind of sound when you engage it. I will continue to talk and then press the button to mute. If I press it again, hey, you can hear me again. I'll press it a little bit more lightly. So it appears that there is no noise from actually muting the microphone, which is great to see. And just for the sake of being as thorough as possible, let's go ahead and press the button on the microphone to see how much noise that generates as well. Although you do not need to press this button when you're live, you can open up the Wavelink software and adjust all of the settings that you can adjust on the microphone via software and avoid any of that clickiness of the button. I am back right on top of the microphone to really accentuate the proximity effect so we can get a good understanding of where the low cut filter is enabled and how it affects the sound. So currently I do not have the clip guard or the low cut filter engaged and here is how the audio is sounding. And now I have engaged the enhanced low cut filter. I am at the exact same distance, exact same gain setting, still no clip guard engaged and here is how the audio compares. Now let me go ahead and demonstrate what the clip guard feature actually does. Right now I have my gain set to 40%. I do not have clip guard engaged. And then if I get really excited, oh my goodness gracious, we are clipping, we are distorted. It sounds absolutely terrible. I think we can all agree that sounds bad. And now I have engaged the clip guard feature. And if I stub my toe and say, gosh darn it, gee willikers, I hate when I stub my toe. This hurts so bad. It doesn't clip, it doesn't distort, it just essentially saves your audio, especially if you're gaming and you get excited and scream or some jerk across the map shoots you, makes it a lot easier to listen to for your audience. Now I am going to go ahead and throw the Wave 3 in my box of doom and we'll measure the noise floor and see how quiet the preamp inside of this thing really is. Now I want to do a very quick comparison between the Elgato Wave 3 and a bunch of other microphones on the market so you can understand where this fits into the bunch. Like always, we'll start on the Wave 3. I am 6 inches off of this microphone. My gain is set at 40%. I do not have the high pass filter or the clip guard engaged. And here is how the audio sounds. Now I am speaking into the classic, legendary, infamous Blue Snowball. I am on the cardioid mode. I am about six inches off of the microphone. The gain on my computer is set to around 65 to 70%. And here is how the audio compares to the Elgato Wave 3. Back on the Elgato Wave 3 so you can hear how this microphone sounds before we jump to another one. Now I'm speaking into the Audio-Technica ATR2100 USB, which is a USB dynamic microphone. My gain on the computer is set to 100%. And here is how the audio compares to the Elgato. Back again on the Elgato Wave 3 so you can hear the tone of this microphone before we jump to another one and record that. 
Now I am on the Rode NT-USB Mini. My gain on the Mac is set at around 45%, and here is how the audio compares to the, what are, the Elgato Wave 3. What a shocker, we are back on the Elgato Wave 3. Listen to the microphone because we're about to jump to another one. Back to the future, I don't know. Here's the microphone sound. Next, I am about six inches away from the Blue Yeti Nano. I am on the cardioid mode and the gain on my Mac is set to 25%. And here is how the audio compares to the Wave 3. Back on the Elgato Wave 3, and I just want to say I am so happy to see a USB microphone that doesn't have a bunch of polar patterns that 99% of people will not use. Now I am speaking into the Samson C01U Pro, 6 inches off of the mic, gain on my computer set to around 50%. This is just a cardioid microphone, and here is how it sounds compared to the Wave 3. Back on the Elgato Wave 3, here's how the microphone sounds. Let's jump to another microphone and compare it to that. Now I am speaking into the infamous Blue Yeti. I am on the cardioid polar pattern. My gain on the microphone is set to around 3 o'clock, while the gain on my computer is set to 75%. And here is how the audio compares to the Elgato Wave 3. Who would have thunk it back on the Wave 3? Here's how the microphone sounds, 6 inches off, gain at 40%, no clip guard, no high pass filter. Let's jump to another mic and compare it to that. Next, I'm about 6 inches away from the HyperX Quadcast. The gain on my computer is set to around 50%. I am on the cardioid polar pattern, and here is how the audio compares to the Elgato. Back on the Elgato Wave 3 so you can hear how this microphone sounds before we jump to another one. Now I'm about 6 inches off of the Razer Siren X USB microphone. The gain on my computer is set to around 60%, and here is how the audio compares against the Elgato Wave 3. If you did not expect me to be back on the Wave 3 right now, you are stupid. Do not be stupid. We are on the Wave 3. Let's jump to another microphone. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you stupid. I got a little bit unnecessarily aggressive there. I apologize. Back on the Wave 3, here's another microphone. Now I'm about 6 inches off of the Bayer Dynamic Fox. The gain switch on the rear of the microphone is set to high. And here is how the audio compares to the Elgato microphone. It's early in the morning, so I am tired, but this is the Elgato Wave 3. Listen to the microphone. Let's jump to another one and compare it to that. Now I'm about 6 inches off of the Audio-Technica AT2020. Running into the Focusrite 18i20, my gain is set at around 2 o'clock, and here is how the audio compares to the Elgato. Hey Elgato, I'm back on your Wave 3 microphone. I didn't get a sticker. What gives? No stickers? Let's, let's jump to another microphone. Next, I am speaking into the Blue Ember, 6 inches off. Running into the 18i20, gain at 2 o'clock, 48 volts phantom power on, no post-processing. Check the lower third, though, to see if I boosted any of these microphones differently in post. But here is how the Ember sounds compared to the Wave 3. Wave Trace. We are on the Elgato Wave 3, 6 inches off. Gain at 40%. No high-pass filter, no clip guard. Here's how the microphone sounds. Here is another microphone starting in 3, 2, 1, go. And now I am speaking into the Shure SM7B at 6 inches away, even though nobody should be speaking into this microphone from 6 inches away. It's connected to the 18i20, gain at 100%, no filters on the microphone are engaged, and here is how the audio from this microphone sounds like compared to the Wave 3. Yep, okay. We are back on the Elgato Wave 3. I pray to the few things left good and holy in this world that this is the last one, Here's how the microphone sounds. Let's let's bleh, 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 bleh. and lastly, I'm about six inches off of the Neumann U67 on the cardioid mode, running into the Universal Audio X8, and here is how the audio compares against the Elgato Wave 3. Next, as far as latency, with a sample rate of 48 kilohertz and an I/O buffer size of 64 samples, we have a resulting latency of 9 milliseconds round trip and 4.5 milliseconds output. When we jump up to 128 samples, we have 11.5 milliseconds round trip, or 5.7 milliseconds output. 
And when we jump up to 256 samples, we have a 17 millisecond round trip, or 8.5 millisecond output. Then with the sample rate set to 96 kilohertz and the I.O. buffer size at 64 samples, we have a latency of 7.6 milliseconds round trip, or 3.7 milliseconds output. When we jump up to 128 samples, we have a 9 millisecond round trip, or 4.3 millisecond output. And when we jump up to 256 samples, we have 11.6 milliseconds round trip, or 5.7 milliseconds output. Do you really want to know how all the microphones sound? Do you really care about them all? Do you really have a question about how to set it up? Do you really care at all? Just asking. I'm sure you do. I'm, of course you do. I would never question you. Of course you care. Of course you do. You're the best. You're the best. Once you've installed the app and you are ready to set up your stream mix on Mac in the toolbar, you will have to open up the Wavelink app. You'll click on the icon that looks like a little wave and you will click configure Wavelink. This opens up the Wavelink mixer and you can see that we have six tracks available at our disposal. The first thing that I want to point out is that you have two separate outputs, one for your monitor mix and the other for your stream mix. You'll set those mixes by adjusting the fader in each of the sound sources, the left one with the headphone being the monitor mix, and the right one with the triangle, the broadcast sign, I guess, is going to be the amount going to the stream mix. To demonstrate this while I'm talking, I will go ahead and decrease the amount of the microphone that is being sent to the stream mix, and you should hear my volume decrease all the way down to... Now, as I bring it back up, you should hear me getting louder and more pronounced, and that is because we are increasing the amount of the microphone signal being sent to the stream. Also, with the microphone input, you're able to adjust all of your settings directly from the computer. So I will click this down arrow to open up the settings. We can change the name of the microphone if we want to. You're able to adjust your gain, the output volume to the headphones, the mix between the computer and your zero latency monitoring, and then you are able to add a high pass filter or a low cut filter. And the really cool thing about this software is that it allows you to add a bunch of different sound sources and act as a mixer to send those sound sources to your stream. I will go ahead and hover over channel two. I will click add audio input and I will select Google Chrome. Now I have Google Chrome set as an audio input source for my stream mix. I will go ahead and jump over to Chrome and I will play a song that I wrote back in 2016. Here is that. I'm a stranger in my very And then I will talk. Bodies. I'm guessing that I my voice is too belong. low so I can go ahead and decrease the amount of the song that is being sent to the stream mix. So my voice should be much more prominent over the music now. Really simple to do that, really simple to add new sound sources to your stream. Really, really useful features there. A common issue that I hear people complain about is the fact that what they are monitoring in their headphones doesn't sound how their stream sounds. And that's because they have no way to monitor what they're actually outputting to the stream, short of going to Twitch or YouTube, wherever they're streaming, and listening back to the stream. Here in the software, down by the outputs, you see that we have little ears next to the monitor mix and the stream mix. So I will go ahead and play my music, and I don't think you'll be able to tell this, but right now I am monitoring the monitor mix, but if I wanted to hear what was being output to my stream, I would click on the ear 
and now I hear my voice and the music playing back so I can make sure everything is set appropriately. Really cool, really useful. I love that. And I think that's actually all for the software. So there you go. All right, Elgato, I, c I see you now. This is how you're supposed to make a USB microphone. But first up, in terms of pros, the software that comes with this thing. It is insanely intuitive. It is very versatile. It allows you to turn off the clip guard. It allows you to add a high pass filter. It allows you to set the gain. It allows you to have five additional sound sources and mix them. It has multiple outputs. It is incredible. You also do not clip when you get excited. So cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just get really excited about these features. You're also able to mix between zero latency monitoring and computer playback. The mounting system has 5 8 and 3 8 inch mounting options. Additionally, I love that Elgato was smart enough to not just design this in-house with non-audio experts. They brought Lewitt onto the team to help design the microphone, and it really shows. It is a great sounding microphone for what it is, and this is kind of a joke, but not really. There's no RGB. There's no RGP. I love it. <laughs> but then in terms of cons, given the price tag of this mic and the features that they were able to pack into it, it's hard to fault it for too much. But the main thing that sticks out to me is the build quality. It does just feel a little bit too plasticky for me and a little bit weak and cheap feeling. But everything else, I really love how they have implemented it. It is very well thought out and really well done. So now what are my overall thoughts and opinions on this microphone? On the electric guitar, I have to say I was pretty shocked. I was expecting to throw this in front of the amp and actually hate it, but I came out quite impressed. The top end of this microphone was smooth and non-fatiguing. Even when I got to the upper register of the guitar, the midsection was nice and controlled. But then when we got to the lower frequencies, it did get a little bit loose or undefined, and I wasn't terribly impressed with the sound quality and the lower bass frequencies. Then for acoustic guitar, what I heard was a very punchy midsection. The top end was nice and articulate, but again, not too fatiguing. But then when we get down to the lower frequencies to sound a little bit repetitive, it gets a little bit loose sounding and a little undefined, but overall, pretty good on the acoustic. Then for singing, the midsection was very smooth and refined. The top end was clear, but it wasn't overly bright or brittle or harsh or shrill. And the low end was nice and controlled. When you get right on top of it, it doesn't get overly boomy, but they do have that low cut filter or high pass filter if you do want to eat the microphone. And lastly, for spoken word, out of all of the USB microphones that I compared it against, I think it came across as the most balanced. The top end was not overly boosted. It wasn't sibilant. It wasn't sharp. The midsection wasn't overly nasally like this. It didn't have any of those frequencies. The lower frequencies were not muddy, although it does seem like there's a pretty aggressive high pass filter below 100 hertz. So you can't really get that really authoritative voice. So if that's what you're looking for, if you want that really bass heavy voice, you're not going to get it out of this microphone. But as a spoken word microphone for streaming, I think it comes across rather balanced and unoffensive, which is pretty important if you're doing really long streams and you don't want your viewers and listeners to say, oh my God, that hurts my ears. It's not going to cause that. So would I recommend the Elgato Wave 3? Yes, I would. I think that this is one of the most well thought out USB microphones that has come out in quite some time. And this microphone embodies everything that I have been screaming about for the last couple of years. Instead of a company investing all of their money and cramming a bunch of features and capsules and polar patterns that the majority of their customers do not need, use that money to develop a single really nice sounding polar pattern and a feature set that is designed specifically for your customer. And for streamers, it seems like Elgato sat down and said, huh, what do streamers need? Okay, let's do that. Let's not do a bunch of other unnecessary crap. It really is amazing what you can do 
if you know what your customers want. I'm truly impressed with the feature set that they have here. Really, really well done. But also, I was quite impressed with how good this thing sounded on the electric guitar, the acoustic guitar, and for singing. Now, it wouldn't be my first option or first microphone pick out of all of the gear that I have, but if you're a streamer and you're getting this to stream with, and you also want to record some music at home, I think it's a perfectly fine option and you can get some pretty good results. So there you have it. I think that's going to wrap up for today. But like I always ask, I want to hear from you. Which of the microphones that I compared it against did you like the best? Do you agree that the Elgato Wave 3 is a really nice sounding microphone? Or do you prefer the Blue Yeti or the SM7B or the Q9U? That's not out yet. What's the one? The ATR2100 USB. Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. If you want more videos, go ahead and subscribe. Logo down beneath me. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. I had to scream because I can't clip it. <laughs> Sorry about that. I couldn't help myself. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you next week. Bye.